Well, when you think of wine, you probably think about it in a bottle or a box. box. You probably don't think about the process it takes to make it. As we discovered, there's more to it than just crushing some grapes. 67 rows of grapes cover six acres of land in Orinogo, Missouri. Eight different varieties, five reds, three whites, and all of the grapes here help make an estimated 2,000 gallons of wine each year. We'll grab some baskets over here. Irv Langan owns Keltoy Winery and Vineyard. 13 years ago or so, we bought the land and then we started putting an acre in at a time and um, just kind of fell together. Will anybody tell you you're, you're crazy to be trying this? My wife all the time, <laughs> especially early on. This is a hobby that's really gotten out of hand. Hands which are busy picking for weeks on end. How do you tell if the grape is ready and ripe? Ready to be picked. We have like these are these already have a little yellow in them. So yeah, so these good. are all right to pick right here. The entire process may start on the vine. You breaking a sweat, Dave? Yeah, I am. But it doesn't end there. It's only the beginning. You'll see in there what Andrew does is on the white grapes. We take, we go in there and we crush those. We got that new crusher we're real proud of. Uh, it'll take 400 pounds at a time. Old wine kind of teach its philosophy to the new grapes. So I'll go ahead Andrew and Pennington is Keltoy's head winemaker. When did you first get interested in winemaking? Back when I was a junior in college, working down at the Missouri Southern Alumni Association as a student employee, I and mean, I really loved growing grapes. And I just wound up inside one day doing some chemistry work in the back, and always loved wine. And one thing just led to a next. And it was in the right place at the right time, I guess. And as you see, it's pretty loud. But it's gonna a great wine starts there. with de-stemming the grapes and pumping the juice and skins into and a large tank, where they sit for 24 hours without any alcoholic fermentation. After that first day, yeast is added, and the primary fermentation process begins. It's a little warm, but that's okay. We'll give it a stir. After sitting for two to three weeks to let the no, yeast activate, the concoction is tested before it moves on to the next stage. And this is really the process that's making the red wine red. The mixture is then tested for its concentration of acids and sugars, something which requires a bit of mathematics and chemistry. 5.3 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Once everything checks out. And this is all nice and clean. Sanitation is the most important thing. So these buckets have been food grade sanitized. The skins and juice are poured into a press where they're separated. The juice is then pumped into another tank for secondary fermentation. And after a year, sometimes two years depending on the variety, then it goes over to this side of the room. And these are my polishing tanks. So this is kind of active wine or wine that's just about to be done. And you talked about having everything really sanitary in the back. How important is that? It's dramatically important. You can go years on aging a premium vintage and if you barrel sample it with a dirty pipette or you get in a rush and you don't want to clean your bottle or that day, you potentially ruin that years and years of labor. And the sad thing is you don't find that out until like two or two no. years down the road. Then down the drain it goes and that's a sad sign to see. As soon as it has finished aging, the wine is filtered, transferred to another tank and bottled. And as a bottler gets full, one goes back in its spot, down the court. How about wine in a box? Uh, I drank a lot of wine in a box in the past. Yeah. But I don't think we'll go there. We'll just have it in bottles and we'll keep corks. Uh, we don't use the synthetic corks, we'll use the natural corks. You do tours? Yes, we do. We have people who come back all the time that will go back and we'll show them the winery back there. We'll take them out there in the vineyard, uh, vineyard and show them that. And, because that's sort of the education process about mm -hmm. what we're about out here. Yeah, get a little fresh air and sunshine too. Oh yes, it's nice to be outside. <laughs> well, as Irv said, uh, Keltoy does offer tours and we've provided days and times on our website, koamtv.com. Now tomorrow morning, we dig deeper into the winemaking process. We take a look at how agriculture factors in. We'll be right back.